Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Sunday. And we have a pretty interesting uh, weather pattern that's setting up for this week and beyond. So we're going to take a look at that. And, of course, we woke up this morning. The temperature's uh, down in the 40s and even some 30s. Uh, in, in the, some of the cold spots in northern New Jersey and in the Hudson Valley. We've got a beautiful day and a perfect day for football, the Giants-Redskins game, and we're going to uh, have this high still overhead into Monday morning. So we have another night of uh, mainly clear skies and probably going to see temperatures maybe even a degree or two lower in some places. So uh, there might be a, a slightly wider area of 30s by morning. But as we go through the day on Monday, clouds will increase. Now you can see this next weather front approaches and actually has showers here uh, a little after midnight, Monday night into Tuesday morning. And then they're still lingering on the coast Tuesday afternoon before they uh, move away. But notice that behind it is not some big high building in, but rather we have uh, still the low that's up near the Great Lakes, if you follow it along, it actually is dropping south southeastward uh, f uh, from its position further north in Canada and then settles over uh, eastern Michigan and a new low develops along the coast. Now, that low moves northeastward and produces some rain, especially for coastal areas later Thursday and Friday. I think it probably keeps us in clouds on Wednesday. And if this plays out, uh, we could have uh, a shot for rain here uh, Wednesday night into or Thursday night into Friday morning. This is what we were talking about later, uh, late last week on the idea that, you know, the way the pattern would, would shape up, that if, uh, if energy piles onto the mid-Atlantic coast, that we could get several days of clouds and some rain. Models backed away from that, and then they moved right back to that solution uh, as we got very close to the event, which makes for very tr uh, frustrating forecast experiences. But... I want to point out that this uh, system for late this week and how it evolves is going to be very, very important to the long-term pattern down the road. And I will show you why. We're going to widen out and deal with the fact that we do have the likelihood of a tropical storm uh, developing in the uh, Eastern Caribbean later this coming week. All mo models show this. The National Hurricane Center actually has an 80% probability now of a tropical cyclone developing over the next five days. So I, I want to uh, illustrate what's going on here. First off, you have this big upper air storm sitting over Newfoundland, Labrador. This is what was the driver for all the cool air. So we kind of understand that. And what's happened is instead of pulling out, it's going back to its original idea of having an, a second area coming around right in here and it reinforces this entire uh, regime of, of storminess out in the Atlantic. So it effectively creates some blocking. That allows this system, instead of just moving along eastward, it has to find some place to go. So it manages to work its way southeastward and in the process uh, either maintain some strength or actually in terms of what some of the models are showing, um, weakens it. Now, you can see it here as it swings around. It can't really move to the east until this thing gets out of the way, which eventually it does. So you wind up with this look, which is this upper low right in here. You can see it there. And now also you have, at the same time, this strengthening ridge of high pressure aloft out in the Atlantic. So that creates uh, a, a westerly fl uh, an easterly flow in the southern regions of the tropics south of 20 degrees north. So now you've got your tropical system moving westward, and it's going to want to at least gravitate toward this um, weakness. Let me just get this. It's going to let me. There we go. It's going to want to gravitate toward this weakness that exists uh, in the Gulf of eastern Gulf of Mexico and in the northwest Caribbean. Now, how that how this weakness develops is going to really solely de de depend on uh, the strength of this upper low. The GFS model gradually lifts that out to the northeast, and even though there is this upper ridge, there is this weakness right in here. You can see it there. There's the weakness. So it's going to want to try and go into that weakness based on this particular model. So this is something that's going to be very, very important. How that upper low plays out, Later this week, how the 
you know, quote unquote storminess um, with regards to low pressure that develops off our coastline, how that plays out late this week will have a, a big say in how this tropical system evolves over time. Uh, and the, I just want to tell you that, you know, not all the models, obviously, we're seeing some different solutions. And actually, I kind of thought that the European solution was pretty outrageous um, in that it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, uh, to tell you the truth. And what this model does is that it drops the upper low, but it just kind of leaves it there and then just gravitates it northward and northwestward. And then it's still around. Um, on Oct here, here we have it for Tuesday, October fourth, and we still have some semblance of it. Now, if this if this is correct, okay, on the European, which is a totally different look uh, than uh, what the GFS has, uh, you're going to have a trough here along the east coast, and your weakness is going to be much further to the east, and it's likely that any tropical system is going to eventually just turn up uh, northwestward, northward, and then northeastward and out to sea. Uh, based on what the European does. So, but, but my problem with this model is the fact that I just don't believe that, you know, it makes kind of makes sense at this through this point, uh, which is through Thursday. Uh, but um, after that, where it does something like this, where I'll show you the difference. This is the European's view, and we'll switch to the GFS's view. See, I, I'm of the notion that sometimes when I look at things in the atmosphere that you try to, you know, you try to look at what is the more probable thing uh, outcome. The, the the GFS to me makes a whole lot more sense than the European does. And frankly, even though both models have done some really crazy things lately, I think the GFS model has been a little bit more consistent than the European. Not that it's been perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it has to me shown a much more rational solution to uh, to some of the things that have been going on in the atmosphere the last couple of weeks than the European has. Also, um, by the way, the uh, GFS models from six, from overnight and the mid run uh, were pretty consistent with this idea. So I'm kind of leaning toward um, all of this uh, with regards to uh, what's going to happen down the road. So we've got a lot to ponder here. Uh, we're going to start uh, keeping a closer eye on things as we move into the new uh, week. And uh, don't forget, uh, ssstormchasing.com. We are, by the way, tonight, uh, my winter out, my winter preview outlook for Pennsylvania uh, will be posting at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So be sure to check for that, um, both on SS Storm Chasing's page and on uh, my page meteorologistjoechaffee.com, and we'll post it up on the Facebook page, obviously, and on Twitter um, uh, uh, this evening as well. Also, don't forget weatherlongisland.com and soon-to-be nycweathernow.com. Have a great day.